All right, Merry Christmas, Wasteland. Mr. G, bringing you your cross-out updates, just like I always do from my literal garage, I mean, my cross-out garage. So if you're new to cross-out, they have a big Christmas event every year. But we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the Christmas event and the unique schedule for upgrading parts and just how huge and massive and awesome that's going to be for those of you that can afford it. All right, first of all, Snowstorm is back in Crossout. That means the Gronch is going to be back, who's this big grumpy guy you're going to have to fight. Essentially, it's an event. It's an event that's going to last until January 17th. And if you've never played this before, you have to defend the truck from attacks by the Gronch's head hedgemen. Can't even talk today, guys. Henchmen? <laughs> the Frost Brothers will take part in the event this year, so we have some new bosses showing up. But essentially, it's waves of bad guys that just keep coming and coming until you get to finally fight the boss, a.k.a. the Gronch. Um, it says there's going to be puddles of fire this time. They've updated the enemy roster to make it more difficult. Um... Some successful strategies from the last event will need to be changed. All right, so they're making it harder to exploit. Starting from Wave 7, players get to access side missions on the map. When you complete those missions, another wave unlocks at 12. Successful completion of side missions will allow you to apply certain bonuses to the truck. Among those, a temporary energy field, repairing some of your truck, and the installation of permanent defense weapon on the truck. After a certain number of waves, players will have to fight the leaders of the gang, for the completion of the brawl, the survivors will receive a special resource, Crackers, aka event resources, you guys know this. Um, those can also be used in or obtained in PvP from New Year's Fever. Uh, but you gotta get through Wave 10 on the present heist. Brawl three times gets you 100 Crackers. Essentially, wave after wave of stuff in a special Christmas event gives you Christmas money that you can spend on crafting Christmas stuff. Um, also, there's rewards for entering the leaderboard. Uh, so, players who take places from 3,000 to 5,000 get candy exhaust. Players from 1,000 to 3,000 get green chrome. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I want some green chrome. And 1 to 1,000, globe duck. Uh, yet another duck thing we can stick on there. Um, also, every day from December 15th to January 12th, unique offers will appear on a special lost and found explosives workbench. Now, this is a big deal, guys. During which you can upgrade a specific part and are guaranteed to get predetermined set of upgrades using the crackers and other resources. So let's give an example of how this is going to work. Another event day is coming. You enter the game. You notice you can upgrade a machine gun and get three already known bonuses. During the entire duration of the offer, you can upgrade an unlimited number of machine guns and get that exact same bonus in advance. So if you've never upgraded a weapon in Crossout, it's simple, weapon or part. You take three items, you jam them together, and like a Las Vegas slot machine, it randomly chooses the bonus you're gonna get. However, they're saying, let's take a look, that during this special time, the lost and found explosives time, you will get a set upgrade. Meaning, if you've got the coin and you want to get all your Typhoon's damage bonus, there's going to be a certain number of days to do that. We're going to go over that right now. So, uh, Relic Parts. Um, for example, the Scorpion's going to be December 15th to January 17th. So you get a wide range of days to do it. The Typhoon, same thing, December 15th to January 17th. Legendary Parts. Helios, 15th uh, to 28th, December. Retcher going to be 19th of December through January 1, the Reaper 23rd through January 5th, Tsunami December 27th through January 9th, Mammoth December 31st through January 13th, and the Apollo from the 4th to 17th of January inclusive. So some of these you get more time, some you get less. It looks like you get about two to three weeks for a lot of these. Hardened Tracks. You know what? I'm not going to read all of these. I'm just going to put the link down below in the description because you're going to want to come back and check and not have to watch a YouTube video. But essentially, you're going to get solid upgrades for these. I'm assuming they're going to pick a good set of upgrades for y'all uh, and you're going to be able to unlock it no matter what. All right. Also, if you did not manage to receive three medals associated with the snowstorm event last year, Now's your time to catch up on unique rewards. So the present manager, destroy Gronch's armored car at present heist. You get the Scar AB portrait. 
You collect a certain number of crackers. Da 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 da. da. You're gonna get personalized banner, and then Henry's helper. Ah, oh, did you get a special themed background? You're also gonna notice that you're gonna have a New Year's themed garage. That's right. So you're gonna get those fancy Christmas style snowman garage going on. That's a little something you can do. And you don't want to forget what's this explosive Santa? Is this a new pack? That looks like it contains some holograms, some lights, and all right, unique armored car, bobsleigh. Okay, power score 1300, ammunition, eight bursts. Damage from a rocket launcher projectile explosion on your own armored vehicle is reduced. So is that a special rocket launcher? Let's take a look. Let's see if we can take a look. Looks like it. Some sort of triple barreled rocket launcher. Okay, that looks pretty sweet. Um, I gotta have that. I gotta try it out. So we're getting a new rocket launcher. Nothing new there on the cabin. That cabin we got for uh, Christmas ages ago, which boosts uh, damage to... What's it called? Icebox? Yeah, there it is. Boosts damage to things, uh, weapons that are uh, limited firing arc. So generally a decent cap. Um, Frostburn pack. There it is. Icebreaker. That one's going to be going on sale. Also, Gage in Pass is designed to protect your account. Yeah, it's some two-factor authentication there. Check that out. Um, all right. And Leviathans. Now, after installing several parts of the same type that consume energy, installing subsequent type will require two times more energy. So they're capping how many of the same weapon you can put on your Leviathan. The number of parts that can be installed without increased power consumption may be different for different types of parts. You will be able to determine the next part will consume more energy by the indicator with the amount of consumed energy next to the part itself. Developer comment. Leviathan's effectiveness will no longer depend so much on the simple installation of a large number of identical weapons. The ability to correctly assemble and successfully combine various weapons will become an important success in battle. Was that the giant drone builds, guys? Were they the ones that ruined Leviathans for everybody? Was it? Let me know in the comments. You're still going to get daily challenges coming down the pipe. Raids are coming. Da, da, da. Now raiders with the cohort cabin can use its perk. All right, so they've changed, turned the bots to be able to use the cohort perk. Some changes to weapons. The sledgehammer is getting a durability nerf. The judge, already great cannon, 5% damage bonus. Prosecutor. Getting a damage bonus of 13% to explosion radius. Already an awesome cannon. Uh, Emily is going to get a damage boost of 10%. Junkbo is getting a nerf. It's getting hit with a reload increase, 10%. Mace getting hit with a nerf to durability. Course rocket launcher. Okay, the cricket. It's getting a bonus of 10% to damage. All right, they're dialing back a nerf on that one they did before. Lacerator continues to get buffed. Another damage buff of 5%. Fafnir. Nerf to reload of 10%. The Caucasus. It's getting a big nerf to durability, but it's getting a weight reduction. Caucasus continues to show overestimated efficiency after the radiators begin to work correctly in conjunction with this weapon. I've never seen a Caucasus be a problem, but okay. Homing rocket launcher Pyre. Turning radius nerfed by 10%. This change will make counterplay a bit easier and will increase the player's chances of evading rockets. All right, we'll take it. Capcan, here it is. It is now easier for heavy vehicles and vehicles traveling at high speed to break the cable. The mine itself now properly triggers on enemies that are moving at high speed. With this change, we would like to change the role of the module. If earlier it could be an ultimate solution against all type of vehicles, now it has mainly become a means of dealing with light, medium armored vehicles. All right, I like the sound of that. Cyclone gets a new model. All right. Also, time to overheat increased by 25%, so a solid buff. With the refinement of the physics model, the task of protecting the autocannon with structural parts should be simplified, aka making it easier to armor. And the increased time to overheat will make the build with three autocannons and one radiator more competitive. All right. The Retcher. 
Location of the barrels has been improved. Spread reduction of 25%. That's going to make Retchers a lot more powerful. Following these changes, builds with fully built up grenade launchers will not be as effective. Really? Really? At the same time, reducing the spread will simplify the game on the second lane for which the weapon was originally designed. So they're saying for those people spamming it across the map, it's going to make it so it doesn't saturate bomb everything. But I feel like that's really going to buff damage at mid-range. But that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Fortune Mine Layer. Da -da -da. The required to launch all projectiles has been reduced by 25%. Not sure what that means. Someone tell me what you think in the comments. The Mastodon. Double charging time reduced by 20%. That's awesome news. And the cannon also reloads faster by 7%. Great. Okay, some changes to meat grinders and big rooms. Corrected the center of mass when using augers and big room. Now armor vehicles with these chassis have become more stable. Alright, upgrades. For all rapid fire machine guns. Dun, 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 all of them. The spread growth when firing decreased by 17%. That's good news. So when you start holding down and shooting, your reticle goes huge. They've made it so the spread doesn't get so massive. Um, there's been an upgrade that helps with spread as well. And a bunch of various fixes and cosmetic and graphical and whatnot fixes. But I'm just giving you guys the rundown. As always, like and subscribe for all things Crossout. I'm going to see you on the next one. Mr. G out.